Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to return to the subject of this guy. This is the Minis Forum N5. It's a NAS that we've spoken about a few times this year, even made it into one of my best NAS of the year videos. But six months on, since I first got this unit in for review, I want to talk about not only my experiences with it, but experiences of the wider community and ultimately give you a better understanding if six months on, this thing still deserves your data. Now, it's worth highlighting before you watch this to go into the weeds a bit a lot more of the detail i have published not only a review on this i've written an article about this as well the written detail review of all of the specs and testing alongside that there was a before you buy much shorter form version but alongside my videos um, i recommend reviews from three other uh, people uh, one level one tech check out his review because frankly it was one of the most approachable ones out there i'm annoyed how much more approachable it is than mine um, also jim's garage or garage and finally server the home three great Great reviews on the N5 Pro that I recommend you check out. All of them detail in different user case environments, by the way, from benchmarking to AI deployment and standard review day-to-day -day usage. But cracking on. Number one, one of the criticisms I had about this device for early doors that has been addressed is sodding stock issues for the most part. When this thing first rolled out, it was only readily available from Minis Forum's own website and Alongside some really poor day one marketing of the device and promos and just a mess overall, um, they kind of got over the hurdle of that and now you don't have to only get this from their own uh, official website there and be subject to those stocks and stuff like that. But now you can get it on Amazon in pretty much all of the standard regions there. Also, there's an N5 and an N5 Pro version. And although my reviews focused on the Pro version, I think we can all agree, myself, the comments, Reddit, the universe, that the N5 standard version is the way forward. Rocking out with promos I've seen as low as 500, uh, Nicker all the way up to about 599 and in the 600s, particularly during Black Friday, by the way, where multiple outlets, including the official site, had the standard N5 at around a 500 Nicker mark. The N5 is just the way to go. It's that Ryzen 255 processor there, 8-core, 16-thread, integrated graphics. I think it's the 680, might be the 780M. Um, and although that version doesn't support ECC memory, it does support DDR5 at 5600 mega transfers up to 96 gigabytes. And although the Pro Series version has a beefier CPU, has ECC memory support, the price difference is about half a grand. So realistically, the N5 is the leader, which leads me back to nothing about stock. The N5 is a bugger to get stock for in some places. Their own website indeed lists it as out of stock. And although Amazon had the standard version out there, the delivery time is a bit all over the place. So if you are considering buying this and you're going to go for the non-pro version, shop around for stock because you might see a site that will take your money but they're not going to be out to deliver well into 2026. Next up, six months on, it's worth talking a little bit about the operating system because there are some users, myself included, that when this came out with their own operating system inside Minis Cloud OS, that were sort of questioning who's going to use it compared to the likes of TrueNAS, Unraid, Proxmox, Open Media Vault, Zimmer OS, etc., etc. And I think I wasn't alone in thinking that. Now, six months on, I will say. It has seen updates, it has seen improvements. However, it looks like 90% of those improvements are back-end quality of life, uh, stability, hotfix, localization, bug elimination, client tools, client tool updates, but not a huge amount of feature updates. And I know it's because uh, Minis Forum are using um, a NAS source code platform that already existed, so therefore they're not hugely in control of that. But a lot of the big feature upgrades, because it was actually surprisingly feature-rich out of the gate, there wasn't a vast amount to add. Things like uh, direct USB 4 connectivity, point-to-point -point cable USB for that point, so you can actually directly interface over Thunderbolt and USB 4 rather than using network cabling. That was already there when it rolled out. The issue was always stability, localization, response times, resilience, and all of that seems to have the most updates thus far. Still, I don't think it is anywhere ready to challenge the likes of TrueNAS or Unraid or Proxmox if you're thinking of deploying this locally. Now, if you do go for the device that's got the operating system included, it does look like the majority of sites still include that OS on an OS drive. They've upgraded that base little M.2 NVMe 
from 64 gig to 128 gig. It is still a 2230 uh, or 2232 uh, M.2 NVMe. So again, fairly, you know, not usable outside of this device, but it's still it's nice to have that OS drive. It's just a shame that it's occupying one of the three M.2 slots inside there. What about if you do install third party operating systems on this device? How do they run? Six months on, has there been many complaints from users? Well, for the most part, no. Um, again, short of uh, some sort of forum posts and Reddit posts that I've seen online regarding Secure Boot, and a few of them related to using Proxmox and having a GPU pass through to certain Windows VMs not being particularly smooth, it's not been something that everyone's been feeling, especially when people have been loading in, by the way, graphics cards as well. SATA pass through, PCIe pass through, by the looks of things, for the most part, barring the odd blip, which again, once you really drill down into the comments, does have certain unique variables in the mix, has been largely good. As long as you disable secure boot in BIOS, you're laughing. That said, on the subject of GPU pass-through, PCIe upgrades and Oculent connected GPUs seemingly have run fine when it's come to using third-party operating systems, but there are still the odd user online at the moment still reporting that iGPU, or in other words, the integrated graphics GPU that arrived with that CPU, not being fully supported in some virtualization environment. There. So if you're going to use this for VMs, do a little bit of digging beforehand just to find out what the state of support and if Minis Forum have run out any patches or firmware updates to address the CPU pass-through for things like Proxmox and just general virtualization. But talking about BIOS, one thing that I didn't realize when I was first testing the device, because when I was using the operating system, I assumed it was because the OS was still not in its infancy, but it wasn't fully fleshed out, you still don't have a huge amount of fan control. Now, technically, you've got all the fan control you're ever going to need. You can make your way in to the BIOS, and you have got BIOS and embedded controller, um, thermal control and fan control there, to a certain degree. On top of that, via command line, as I was able to do, you can push certain things to action the fans manually. But for the most part, you're going to be heavily reliant on the automated fans and cooling system on this, which a lot of other users are going to be fine. But in terms of noise or when you might want to ramp the fans up manually on purpose, you're not going to have that level of control. Now, again, it doesn't seem to have been something that's been fixed um, currently or if it will because of the hardwired way it's been made. But just be aware, if you get this, the level of control you have over the fans at the time of recording isn't fantastic. And you are going to have to make your way into BIOS and then from there have to set the fan uh, and cooling values. Now, one of the things I didn't cover in enough detail in my review, uh, which has since featured in a few other reviews, is to do with the M.2 NVMEs. In my review, I covered speed tests on those, temperatures, thermals. Again, we've gone back to that stuff for the fans. But I didn't go into a lot of detail about the U.2 upgrade card included with this, because at the time for that recording, I didn't know whether that board would be included with this device when people purchase it. It turned out it was. So when you do get hold of this, you get a little card, a PCB card, that slots into the M.2 NVMe slots and allows you to have one M.2 NVMe and two U.2 storage drive in there, which is fantastic because you think U.2, that is some serious high-performance, high-capacity drives. Unfortunately, users have checked and you can't go above seven millimeter in height because although there is a decent amount of room there, once you factored in the card, which is already raised from the internal PCB, the result is that U.2 inside, it seems that you can't go to full 15 millimeter height U.2s. Why is that a problem? Well, if you want to take advantage of the capacity gains of U.2, then you have to start looking at 9, 12, 15 millimeter height U.2s. And 15 mil is kind of where it's at once you're going into the big boy double digit capacity terabytes. Finally, and I'm kind of stunned I have to say this, but at the same time, I do think it's weirdly something that no one spoke about that much in their reviews, including myself, because we just took it as read. A lot of users are buying this and not realizing that the base model doesn't feature any memory. You get the device with a storage drive inside, but it doesn't include any memory by default. And they're setting the device up and not knowing why it's not working. So just remember, the base price for this and the Pro Class model doesn't include memory. 
Additionally, this is again a slightly minor and arguably niche point and not normally something I'd feature in a nice chewable six months later video, but I think it's necessary enough to add and that is that the two NICs on the back of this, the 5GBE and the 10GBE, keep in mind that they are from different companies. They have different controllers and they require different drivers. Now, if you're in a Windows environment, who cares? You know, you just download the Realtek driver, download the Marvell driver, the Aquantia chip inside, that's fine. But if you're running certain operating systems where driver implementation might not be available, and there are some out there, just keep that in mind. So double check that not only are drivers available for the operating system that you're going to run on the N5 for you to add the drivers for the 5 and the 10 gig NIC, but also add in there that the operating system allows you to inject them smoothly. Some users reporting on things like BSD have said there are slight barriers. Again, it is user case and it is niche. I just wanted to add this. And finally, let's end on the idea of what Minis Forum does next, because there's going to be some users that have looked at this device that is now six months old in the market, and to largely positive acclaim across most places, a lot of users are going to be wondering, is Minis Forum going to be rolling out other NAS devices, much like they've done when they've upgraded their workstation devices every year to year and a half, the MS-01 into the 02 Ultra, the A1, the A2, etc., etc. And is Minis Forum going to roll out, if not a refresh of this, then perhaps an expanded NAS range? And the honest answer right now is, I don't know. CES, just round the corner, it wouldn't surprise me if Minis Forum, if they do have a follow-up NAS device as they expand out their um, investment in Minis Cloud OS and the development towards NAS systems, wouldn't surprise me as Minis Forum are rolling out new NAS solutions, but right now at the time of recording, I have no idea. And if you want the best kind of hardware for your money in a ready-to-rock NAS solution that is both turnkey and OS-free to use the ones you want to use, as mentioned in my Best of the Year video, the N5 is kind of one of the best gigs in town right now, only seconded closely by something like the Ustar. But there you go, that has been the Minis Forum N5 six months later. Did you buy this? How are you enjoying it? And if you're thinking about going for this device and you're still on the fence, that's what the comments are for. Speak to me and other users about what you need it for and whether this can do the job and hopefully we can work together on this. Now, as always, if you found this video helpful. If you want to support what we do, and if you're gonna shop at the stores listed anyway below in the description, please use those links in order to get hold of absolutely anything, not just the Minis Forum N5. Using those links will allow us, me and Eddie at NAS Compares, it's just us doing this, to keep doing what we do, because we get a small commission on anything you buy, and it costs you nothing extra to do so. It's a way for you to passively support creators, but only do it if you want to support us, going to shop at those stores anyway, and have found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.